Welcome to our eSignal Forex and Futures Forecast. My name is Jay Norris and I'm a trading instructor at Trading University. First thing we need to remind you is that trading is a risky endeavor and not suitable for all investors. First market we're going to take a look at is going to be the Australian dollar. This is a weekly chart of the Australian dollar. You can see you, you've had some pretty good downside uh, through most of 2013 here. And, you know, the, the question I have to ask is, this is how the Australian dollar uh, performed in, in a, a weak dollar environment in 2013. Uh, if we were to see the flip side of that and see some U.S. dollar strength, um, how would that bode for the Australian dollar? Uh, you know, to me, it, it points to still lower prices. I think you'll see a test of 85 even here. That's the 50% of this uh, of this big up move. So I think you'll see 85, and likely you'll see 80 even also. Uh, we'll have to see how price behaves there. Of course, it's a market. You know, it'll, it'll trade. It'll, it'll go both up and down. If you take a look at the uh, the daily chart in the upper left-hand corner, um, you see it had a little bit of play to it, but but very much still a bear market. We would expect that to continue. You, you could see right there, kind of potential for a double bottom. If if the if the August low, if the summer low doesn't hold in the Aussie, you know, I think most assuredly you're going to see 85 even. I think you'll see it either way. Uh, the the real question is, do you get uh, some kind of a dead cat bounce? Do you get some kind of a short short covering rally in the Australian dollar? So I don't see a lot of upside in, in that market currently. Next market we're going to cover is the dollar index. The U.S. dollar. One thing I think that a lot of of traders are overlooking is the big picture. Is the the longer term chart here? This is the dollar index, and if you go back to the uh, the summer of 2011, you have an uptrend. That's a primary. That's a, a bullish primary pattern. In our book, primary patterns anywhere from nine months to to three years. So if if you go back uh, two and a half years, you have an uptrend. So people a lot of people are overlooking this that the the dollar technically is in a bull market already I, i'm not surprised that we're uh, seeing a lot of primary dealers coming out now uh, such as deutsche bank such as bank of america they're putting out uh, bullish dollar calls for 2014 based on continued strength in the u.s economy based on interest rate differentials i have to agree with that and it's not that difficult of a call to make, considering that the, the dollar index itself is is already in a bull market. You're looking at you know a two and a half year uptrend. That's that's your primary pattern, guys. So we think you, you probably will see some upside in the dollar index. We think this will be the year that you'll you'll take out that consolidation at 84, and uh, and you'll challenge the 8890 level in dollar index. So keep an eye on that. Next market would be the the flip side of the. Of the dollar, that would be the euro. Keep in mind the euro makes up uh, 60% of the dollar index itself. So if we're calling for dollar strength, we kind of be looking at de facto euro weakness, and we think that is the case. Um, here's a weekly chart of the euro. Pretty interesting structure. You see that big long term trend line? You're just below it right now. See that purple line? That re represents a 50% retracement of the, the 160 high. Uh, back in 2008 down to the 120 low so you're right in the middle of this range so all that talk about euro strength uh, and it has been strong in, in 2013 you're really just back in the middle of the range we see Europe is in a tough position to try to compete with the US and even more important that will create those interest rate differentials you'll see higher rates sooner in the United States than you certainly will in Europe we feel and that's gonna make for uh, potentially weaker euro but really, when it comes down to it, from an investor standpoint, if you've if you've had investments in euro, and just even in the last five years or so, you look at your risk on that trade, and and the risk is you get these big downstrokes in the market. You know, you get these massive sell-offs in that currency, and nobody wants to have to worry about that. Therefore, it makes a lot more sense if you're going to invest in the euro to do it on these troughs, to do it at these lower prices. So I, I think you'll. Going into 2014, investors have to look pretty hard about putting new money in here because they're concerned about that the risk, that currency differential when, when you see the, the currency come down hard like that, when you see it sell off like the big sell off in 2010, the big sell off 2011, 2012. Also, you don't want to have to worry about that in your investments. And, and I think that's another plus for the U.S. dollar. Let me go back to the dollar index 
you know we're always concerned about our principal it's not just return on the money but it's the principal too here's the big picture of the dollar index from my perspective i don't think you have to worry too much about principal depreciation if anything you could see principal appreciation if you got a breakout above uh 84 and, and you challenge 88 90 you're going to have some nice appreciation on your principal along with the interest from uh, those treasuries or, or corporates or or whatever you were wherever you'd have your money so here's the big picture in the dollar and that's going to be you know the mirror opposite of the the picture in the euro i'll go back to that euro so I think it's going to be tough uh, for investors to to go ahead and, and want to deploy into euro when they're looking at that big picture. And and believe me, big money looks at the big picture, right? Next market will be the pound dollar. I'm not that excited either way about the pound here, and I'll show you why. I don't, I don't cover it all that much, but to me, it's just a big flat sideways market. I mean, I, I don't see it getting too far. Maybe you challenge 170. We'll have to see. I think the pound is kind of uh, the pound is likely to be held hostage by the euro. Uh, I, I do think you'll see pound strength uh, relative to the euro. So if you're a currency trader, you're a cross trader, that may be a pair uh, to watch. Uh, euro pound, look for weakness there. But against the dollar, I think you're probably restricted to a pretty wide sideways range here, 170 on the upside. Uh, likewise, uh, 145 on the downside. So I don't cover the pound that much. So taking a look at it from uh, 30,000 feet or so, it, it just looks like a big sideways market to me. Next market, we're going to get into the commodities, the gold market. This is an interesting chart for us. I, I kind of overlaid some boxes on here, and I want to make a fairly simple point. This is commodities. This is gold, cyclical bull market, cyclical bear market keep it very simple I mean that's just how I view it you can see you have a double bottom here really this is the this is where uh, gold traders need to make the kind of a last stand in this market if this double bottom doesn't hold you're, you're probably going to see 1100 and then potentially a thousand fairly quickly big big level big big level you go back to that summer low on the gold it's got to hold and I honestly I think that I think no matter which way it goes, you're probably going to pop those stops. You're probably going to pop the stops below oh, 1175. And if that's the case, to, from my perspective, if you want to go long gold, you want to take a flyer going long it, let them pop those stops first. And then if it can close back above that level uh, fairly quickly, it would have to do it quickly. They have to pop the stops to show strength right away. Then I think you'd you take a flyer, speculate on maybe slightly higher gold prices short term. But that's that. If, if you don't hold that level, you start seeing successive closes below that level, I, I think you'll, you'll definitely see lower prices. But I, I think this is kind of a cool chart. Very, very simple. Cyclical bull market, cyclical bear market. That's commodities. I've been in the commodity business a long, long time. And, uh, you know, it, 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 they're fairly straightforward if you can keep them simple, if you can if you can avoid trying to go after those little shorter term moves and, and just take that uh, view from 30,000 feet. Um, it's fairly simple to identify those uh, those bigger uh, those bigger patterns and stay out of trouble. One last commodity market we're going to cover would be the crude oil market. Uh, I've done the same thing here. Keep it simple. It's commodities. It's not rocket science. Cyclical bull market, cyclical bear market. Crude oil would have an extremely hard time getting any higher. I'm just fascinated that they got this, they pumped this last rally out of this market when all of Wall Street is is they're climbing over each other to get out of the commodity business now. Yet they were able to you know yet you had one one last hurrah here one last push up to 110 in, in crude oil and giving everyone a pretty good exit out of commodities overall. Again, I, I think it's the turn. You know, I just think it's the turn. You've got so much going for lower crude oil prices now. Similar to those big discoveries we saw in the Balkan and, and in uh, in West Texas also. Similar to those discoveries that five years ago we didn't think we could get at that oil now. It, it's pumping up and it's a higher quality than they thought. You have similar discoveries in Australia now. You look at the Mexico and the Gulf of Mexico now. They've opened up their market to letting some of the bigger companies develop that virtually over the last year or so north america is now energy independent and that that's a trend that this more oil coming out of the ground hard higher quality than they thought that's not a trend that that's going to end anytime soon so long term we see oil prices still dear 
and if you do get the cyclical bear market um we think that uh you know it, it can work its way down towards 80 70 even 60 so that's our big picture thank you so much we'll catch you next time again my name is jay norris thank you